Welcome to Illinois Media School, ladies and gentlemen. We have a special guest. My name is Giante Ballard. I'm this Louis Hendricks. And this is my lady, Miss Annabelle, in the building. Uh, I want y'all to make a warm welcome uh, for the one and only our state representative and congressman, LaShawn Ford. How you doing? Thank you. Uh, happy to have you in the building. Welcome to IMS. As a man of the city, um, and for the city, of course, for the return and rebirth of positive and safe community relations. Tell me how growing up in the Austin area helped mold you into who you are today. And did any of those experiences uh, shape you into becoming possibly a congressman and at one point a teacher? Yeah, I mean, growing up on the West Side of Chicago, oh, yeah, man. I mean, that's, you got some real life hey. lived experiences. Yes, so, sir. you know, you talk about the concrete jungle. Yeah, you oh know, man, 100%. It's we all just know a it. real deal. And if you are able to survive the West Side, it's beautiful. Yeah. You can survive anywhere. Yeah. It's like a honeymoon wherever you go. Yeah. If you, you, you have to go through the West hey, Side listen, of Chicago. I got so. family on Gladys and Cicero. I grew up all around it, so I know, I definitely know the hills. But like, you know something? It's still beautiful. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, it's to see that yeah, culture, beautiful. it's yeah. beautiful to see people hang out. If we could hang out and oh, be man. safe. What's your plans with dealing with uh, the food shortages in the communities? And I also want to ask you about uh, what was your plans about building the curriculum in the school system? Yeah, one, when we talk about the food shortage, I mean, we have to make sure that we eliminate the deserts. We right. need to build more grocery stores right. and affordable, giving people the opportunity to have access to capital to open them. We don't have to have these big chains like Jewel a or a Walmart coming right. We know that there are some people that have visions for having fresh fruits and vegetables and big grocery stores. So we have to provide grants to help these small uh, inspire business companies. open so up the these big stores we got to get back to these mom and pop stores yeah. and, yeah. Like and expand yeah. like right yeah. yeah i mean that's a good idea i mean when she talks about the farmer's market people really should do pop up farmer's market yeah. Yeah. So one of the first bills that i did was to say that you could use your link card at farmer's market that was my yes. bill was too. yeah so that that's See, a good idea to, you know, that's a, man, that's a good idea to start popping up those yeah. fresh fruits yeah. and vegetable stands yeah. on the, um, in the city. So what about, actually, you know, like when you ride through certain neighborhoods, you see blocks, empty, vacant lots. Like, what is your plans on rebuilding the communities? Just, you know, housing. Yeah, works. I think yeah. rebuilding the community will eliminate a lot of problems in our um, neighborhoods that reduce crime and increase property values. Give us and places to work. Give us places to work. That's why I want trade schools back in the city of and Chicago they so that we can have. Of kids need to work right. They cut out funding in 2012. Right. They cut know. the funding for it. But we need to bring back the trades. It's just a lot of schools and kids that don't have shop class, don't have mechanics class. Like, I don't yeah. know who's got it in the city yeah, of Chicago. So what happened? Yeah. Why would they cut important programs like that? That's I, could, I, could, I could answer that for you. Okay. So in 2012, they put approximately like three or four million into CPS and they put more money into the jail system. That's it. They, yeah. they invest more in the prison industrial yeah, complex. And that's, but, not, that's, and that's bad. I was just in Rolling Meadows and I was in Palatine. Mm -hmm. And these high schools, they actually have something for all of the students' class, desires. Class, I actually yeah. went in an automotive I went into a classroom where they were teaching, uh, teaching um, culinary arts. I went into a classroom where they were teaching welding. I went into a classroom where they were actually um, a beauty school. Yes, yeah, opportunities I mean, to oh, yeah. But out there, but yeah. not in the city. So we yeah. have to have- I had maybe two of those things in my school. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I went to a school in Howard, oh, Georgia. It's like, it's like 45 minutes outside of Atlanta. Like when I was a junior high school, my mom sent me with my, you know, my stepmom, my little brothers on my dad's side. And they get all of it, you know, hairdressing, right. automotive, you know. Yeah, home, stuff home you have to go to college and extra yeah. school sports right there. It's they, right there. They yeah. it We're going to have that in the city. Yeah. I mean, we have to have it because not everybody want to go to college. Yeah, and it's they, a mass yeah. population of people that all want to do different things. Right. Not everybody wants to go straight to college. And we've shown, just yeah, and we've shown college. as a people and as an entrepreneurship, not only just in Illinois, but as a country, we can do and achieve multitudes of things with or without, you know, what we would consider regular school. And that's not to go against further and higher education. Obviously, we're here at Illinois Media School, but even this is a separate avenue from your average college or university, which still provides those multitudes of avenues to succeed. But it's for it's for some people. Yeah, of and, course. You know, we already know that going to a four-year university, you're going to be saddled with more debt. Yeah. 
And that doesn't mean that you're gonna have a high paying job. Yeah. But we know that when you have a career and you go through trades, those careers pay more than sometimes first year attorneys. So one thing I also found as I was doing my research about you, you are a 2018 Nelson Mandela Award winner uh, for a justice honoree for fighting for peace and equality on the west side of Chicago. I want to give a quick round of applause to that. To win a illustrious uh, award like that, it is no small feat. Um, I wanted you to tell us a little bit more about that and how that uh, accomplishment came about. You know, one of the things that I got elected on was fighting for people in the space of re-entry. 100%. And we already know what the country did to President Mandela. They incarcerated him for over 20, almost 30 years. Yeah. And so, and he still became president. Right. And so my thing is, one of the first things that I did when I got elected, I eliminated the box off the application so people would have the right to apply for mm -hmm. a job. Yes. That's what you want, I also um, did uh, allow for people to get their felonies sealed so people could get That's their felony sealed. They can't get them expunged, but they can get them so sealed. So the reason after deal. seven years, such and such can get his record seen. Yes. That's but it's, nice. it's an exception, right? Because it can't be like a, the child, what is it? Yo, oh, you're right. You can't, no yeah, sex no offense. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 but that's there have been point. people with class X felonies that's gotten their records sealed. Yeah. It's the right thing to do. So my thought is in this community where we know most other people come back from prison, there is really no opportunity. No yeah. And that's a big thing. And yeah. that's why Nelson Mandela, I mean, if you just give people opportunity, yeah. there's no telling what they would be. I mean, President Mandela, had an opportunity to look, he became president. Yeah, regardless it, 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 to yeah, what his yeah. history was. And if you if you only view somebody as a prisoner or ex-prisoner, you'll never get more out of them than that. And it, and it shows all the time, and not just the entertainment industry, but other, a, a bunch of other industries where people have thrived, even through having a history of downtrodden times and mishaps and circumstances. Who so, could be better for fixing America than people that have had challenges? 100%. I mean, they have the experiences. 100%. My last question for you, Ed, before we get out of here, are there things that you learned during your 2019 camp mayoral campaign that have helped you in Congress as far as how you approach discussions about changing your community? And are you interested in a possible uh, re-entry into our mayoral campaign? Well, I would say getting across the city, seeing this city, everybody's hurting in, a, in some way. Yeah. And I realized regardless of what communities you're from, everybody's got problems and there's poverty everywhere. And so I learned that the only way we're really going to be able to heal as a city is if we recognize and respect each other. 100%. And I we think that we can same. do that. Yeah, we all need the same. Yep. And so that's that taught me more about how we got to be one city. Yeah. It's a tale of two cities, but regardless, if you live in Lincoln Park, you better be concerned about people in Austin. Yeah. If you live in, yeah. in, in, in um, downtown Chicago, you better be concerned about people in Inglewood. Because it's right up the street. It's right up the street. We're yeah. in it together. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I would love to be the man of the city of Chicago to yeah. reverse, yeah. To yeah. reverse yeah. some yeah. of the institutional yeah. racism. Yeah that we have in the city, See, and, and gotta go in a different direction. A lot of people won't even speak on that yeah. institutional racism. It's a lot of that, that not only in our community, um, as far as Chicago, but Illinois as a whole, that requires a lot of reform. And a lot of people will look at some of the younger youth and their complaints towards, you know, uh, legislation or things of that nature and consider it as just random outcry, but you seem to be very in tune with that and understand that some of these claims and concerns are not unwarranted. You know what? If we don't address deliberately and intentionally the black problem, this city will never heal. We have to have a mayor that knows that we got to go after the black issues, issues that we're living with as black people Every that day. were created by a system. Yeah. So, and I learned that white people, everybody want to help, but they got to be given the opportunity. George Floyd was a perfect example where white people was like, black lives matter. Right. But black people didn't come together to put something strong together to bring them in so that we could fix the problem, but they're ready. So not only are you a congressman, but you were a former basketball coach. Yeah, I had fun hey. coaching uh, at the elementary level. Yeah. In fact, I ran into one of my um, students. He, he sold me some um, shirts. Hey, and he was like, Mr. Ford, it's hey. me, Rob. That's so I, taught, I used to teach and I coached. And um, in fact, he actually 
texted me the other day about his son saying, Mr. Ford, he don't have the fire and the desire like we had. I said, well, make sure he's doing what he want to do. Right. Not what you want right. to do. Right, that's, that's you know, it right there. You, know, you have to try, that's what I want my kids to do. You try things and try more things. Yeah. Because you never know what you're going to like. You never know what you're going to be good at. Yeah, 100%. that's right. I mean, you should support kids to do what they want to do mm -hmm. so that they could be great at what makes them happy, yeah. not what we want yeah, them to do. Right. Well, and a lot of parents, they say, uh, they they put their fears, of, they limit to what another person can do. And that's just people in general. Man, yeah. I feel it. I'm a father. My daughter is 17, and my limitations, I have to be intentional about not placing it on my daughter. That's right? You know, it's easy for us to say, that's all you need. No, you gotta open it up like you said. Let them try everything, right. you know? You like. And that's that's how they're gonna find themselves because they don't really have yeah. an understanding. Yeah. yeah, I just wanna say that I appreciate you for, you know, taking the initiative to put back in trade classes in school. You yeah, guys right. gonna help me fight for it? Oh man, uh, that's, no, that's serious. That's, so, that's something we're fighting for. Yeah, 100% but, because we need that. Exactly. So what y'all what y'all doing? Um, you guys gotta support this initiative. We're gonna have something at the Thompson Center tomorrow. Oh, definitely. Y'all should oh, come. I would love it. I'm, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna give y'all the information. It's youth speaking at the Thompson Center. You I guys will have the ability to, to speak up I and talk like about that trade yeah. center. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, man? It's your boy G. Ballard here, uh, live from Illinois Media School, checking in. Uh, we're here at the Thompson Convention Center. We just came down for the Youth Summit uh, with Senator Congressman uh, LaShawn Ford. Had some time to sit down and talk to the youth about their plans to help the Chicago City. Um, powerful summit um, to sit down and speak and hear from not only the youth, but some of our older people in the community, but more specifically the youth about what they want to do to change uh, and improve our community, uh, everything from our schools uh, to the places we live and the food we eat. Uh, Louis, how'd you feel about the summit? Yeah, it's Louis Lord from Illinois Media School. See, what I got from the summit was basically we all want change. You know, we we tired of dealing with the same thing for generations, and you know, something got to change. You know, something got to give. You know, with these food deserts, you know, schools ending, schools closing down. Uh, it's just, you know, they really out here for the people, you know, so it was a good, it was a good summit, you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, powerful summit. Um, we actually have a couple of guests we'll be bringing on shortly. We have uh, Taylor Norwood and a couple of great guest speakers, uh, some really young, powerful voices for the community. Yo, what's up? It's Louie Lloyd with Illinois Media School, and I got Taylor Norwood with Good Kids Mad City. Hey, everybody. It's Taylor G. I heard that you want, that you are expecting or hoping to expect the CPS to you know, spend 3% to rebuild the community around the schools and actually help these kids out. And So that is actually the bigger peace book ordinance that we're doing, um, not specifically CPS, but we are asking the mayor's office to cut 3% um, of CPD's budget, which is $1.8 billion and climbing every year, um, which comes out to about a little under like a couple, couple million dollars. It's not too much to ask. Um, those resources will be going, one, to fund, again, the things that are going on in the school. Um, those, that funding will go towards planning different trips, different events, getting different resources for those kids. But that funding will also go towards the separate or the outer community um, aspect of the Peace Book, which will be um, us being those community members, engaged community members, are going out and we're seeking out these gang members, these leaders on these blocks, these elders, um, and we're really instilling in them what creating a peaceful environment and safety in our communities looks like. We want to pay them. Um, starting at $50,000, we want to pay people a livable wage to actually be the ones in their community because nobody knows community like the people from community. So we want to these people to go out to be the ones um, telling each other, going and knocking on their neighbor's doors, um, watching after the kids, standing on the corners, why kids going to stores, why they're coming from school, why they're going to school, and really um, incentivizing a, a peaceful community, a peaceful habitat, um, not just for themselves, but for everybody around them. Yeah, that's dope. I, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, it's a lot of corrupt policing going on in the neighborhoods. It's been going on, but now we got cameras to record it and actually broadcast it to the world. I really appreciate it uh, being invited out to this summit. Um, real big appreciation to LaShawn Ford for inviting Illinois Media School out here to cover this. Mr. Ford, we thank you for coming in. Chief Ballard, Miss Annabelle. Yes. 
Thank y'all for coming in Illinois Media School. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. You guys are doing great things.